Jeff Hutchison is driving you home. Yeah, yeah. ABC Radio Perth. We saw cartons of eggs, four boxes of cereal, two blocks of peppermint chocolate, boxes of breakfast tea, soft drinks, packets of popcorn, tissues, lots of canned tomatoes, bags of sugar, and even the Holy Grail these days, a full box of paracetamol. It might sound like things that you buy on your weekly shop, but that was the haul that was found in the skip bins behind major Perth supermarkets. Does it surprise you? Probably not. We've been here before, but we've talked about it for such a long time. Should we expect better? The scale of food waste in Perth is a topic that my next guest is very passionate about. In fact, he calls it a kind of pollution. Stuart Kidd founded Foodie Bag last year, and the organisation uses an app to redistribute food extras from Perth businesses to the public. Stuart, welcome to Drive. Thank you very much for having me, Jeff. Well, I was rather struck by these photos. What struck you when you saw all that wasted produce, produce that looked to be perfectly okay? Yeah, I've seen it so many times now, unfortunately, Jeff. Uh, The big supermarkets are doing it on a daily basis. So it's just terrible thinking about how much food waste is happening and how what better way those bits of food could go to. Now, you're in the business of of saving food from skip bins. Tell me a little bit about what you seek to do, what you most commonly want to collect and who the beneficiaries of it are. So the beneficiaries should really be the the general public who who wants to go out and, and buy this food which is close to its expiry dates or may have defects or it may just be end of day goods. So we have some really good early adopters like Mayor Street Bakery and Lawley's who've jumped on board and they sell their end of day products towards the end of the day. Yeah. You can buy it through the app for a third of the price in the form of a foodie bag. But there are so many corporations that just don't really bat an eyelid when they're throwing out bulk items like uh, whole bin loads, the skip bins on a daily basis. What do you see when you look at those skip bins? And and, and of the, the produce you see in them, what is, it must be a little bit enraging, I would think. Oh, totally. It's, it's absolutely scandalous. I want to look at everything there and I see what's been thrown into those bins. It's actually, it's devastating for the planet, the plastics, the water, the animals that go into these products. And um, they're just getting thrown, thrown away. And there's not even a, a discount sticker on the, the image that you're looking at. Where do you get your food from for foodie bags? So I, obviously you've got some private businesses who understand it, particularly bakeries who would like to uh, offer up excess stock at the end of the day. Have you had any luck with supermarkets? No, supermarkets have been very difficult. I've approached a few um, IGAs and they've contacted me as well, but none of them yet have made any uh, steps forward to decreasing their food waste. With the big ones like Aldi, Coles, especially Coles and Woolworths, they do do some work with charities like Oz Harvest and Second Bites, yeah. but it's just a fraction of, of, of the waste that's actually being given to those charities. There's so much more on a daily basis that doesn't go anywhere. And that's really interesting to me. Uh, Stuart Kidd is the founder of Foodie Bag. He's my guest on Drive. I must admit, Stuart, I was a little bit of the view, because they're such um, fine charities, that of Harv- Oz Harvest and Second Bite and Food Bank, which is always always looking for good quality food to be able to distribute to the many thousands of West Australians who need it so much. I kind of thought that there were uh, strong relationships with supermarket chains, that perhaps um, the supermarket chains had this uppermost in their environmentally aware minds, that if something could be given to someone else, then that's what should happen? Or clearly I've been a bit dreamy about it. Yeah, I think it's because there's there's no legislation um, saying that supermarkets need to give them away. They So it works out actually, unfortunately, they're a profit company, they're a commercial company, and, and they prefer to obviously look after their profits. So they, they sadly, they seem to, uh, you know, throw things away because it's probably easier for them to do so than rather than to organize for all those things to be given to charity or all sold at a discount in the supermarket itself. Yeah. So what should they be doing? And you talk about being sold uh, at a discount at the end of the day in the supermarket. You talk about produce going to charities. What kind of produce is so valuable and would be of such use to people, Stuart? 
Probably, if they look at you, look at things like um, meat. Meat is um, expensive product to make and to produce, and so meat and people value meat. People like protein, and a lot of poor families don't have access to to that high protein, which they would require, um, especially young people. Yeah. Um, so I think what they they could do is is have larger sections at towards the end of the day with discounted um, products and making that making people aware of those, those products that are existing. And, you know, if it gets to over a point where they, they, they no longer ha- everyone's coming at the end of the day to buy those products, then, you know, then that's a, they don't need to produce that many products. They can work that out. At the moment, everything's created in such a huge amount. They, they, they seem pressurized to, you know, either throw it away or, and start it fresh the next day. On Drive this afternoon, you're listening to Stuart Kidd, the founder of Foodie Bag, expressing some frustration about the amount of food that ends up in skip bins behind supermarkets. And he sent the photos to us. Or we saw the photos today. And you do kind of look at that list of things and think, why, why is that in the skip bin? A couple of things, obviously, that supermarkets are very aware of. They believe that customers are concerned about imperfections in fruit and vegetables. Uh, I hope we're learning something on that front, Stuart, and we're just appreciating them for the fruit and vegetables they are. And the second thing, the whole idea of the use-by date, uh, does that continue to, to, to really cloud demand for something that might otherwise be perfectly good to eat? Absolutely, it does. Yeah, I think there's a lot of confusion around that and people need to be um, better educated. And even the you know, packaging could better educate people on that as well. Um, but I think that the biggest issue really, it, it comes down to legislation. I think governments need to make a change. If you look at countries in, like in Europe, they've already made those changes and they penalise companies for throwing away waste. They have to do better. And they certainly know how to produce a lot of greenwash advertising that says all our food comes from local farmers. It's the freshest thing daily. You just want more and more people to be able to access some of that food at a cheaper price before it goes into a bin. Yeah, absolutely that. Yeah. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much, Stuart. Stuart Kidd, founder of Foodie Bag. Your stories from your city every day. This is Drive with Jeff Hutchison on ABC Radio Perth.